Welcome back to episode 19 of our New Zealand road trip. In the last video we checked out three cool ways to see Christchurch and kept noticing these awesome looking places to eat, snack and drink. Discovering a new city through food is always a good idea, so prepare for equal parts of jealousy and hunger watching this one. Sorry, I jumped the gun. <laughs> the dumplings were amazing. I really like them. Christchurch has done an amazing job with the rebuild so far, building out specific zones, cool laneways, shopping districts, bars and eateries. We've got a list of local recommendations and while walking around we're going to explore the city a bit to burn off some calories between meals. Sampling. Oh, that is sour. <laughs> <laughs> Your eye closed. We've also been told about a rooftop bar that's apparently the place to be to wrap things up with a sunset drink. So, two dollars per half day, that can't be right. Two dollars for up well, to 120 minutes, sorry. We want more than 120, I think, do we? Uh, oh, I pressed the wrong button, that's so embarrassing. I pressed this thing. <laughs> oh, no! Someone can probably hear you there. Cut. <laughs> okay, now that we've all forgotten about that embarrassing moment of me, A, pressing the wrong button, and B, reading the, the, reading the sign incorrectly, we found a car park in town that we think is, Oh, now we don't know which floor to go to. I just pushed one. Okay. Except number one to the shops in the city. I knew it okay. read. I just look at it. Two dollars for the first two hours and then two dollars per half hour after that. So now we're good. But today is all about the food. And whenever we go somewhere new, we always want to um, try new places, find out the best restaurants. Yeah. Make sure we don't miss out on like all the good stuff. But you need the locals' opinions. Exactly. We need the insider knowledge, the inside so, scoop. I asked on Instagram, what the best places to eat are, the best places to drink, best places to get treats, and there were so many suggestions, but there were a couple that popped up quite a few times, so we made a list, best places to go for breakfast, lunch, don't think we'll fit dinner in. <laughs> we treats, never do, we, we never make it to dinner on a DIY food tour day like this, do we? You never. done such a good job through here, eh? I love this area. This, this is, is such a good spot. This street here is Oxford Terrace. We went along this um, route. You can see the tram tracks in the middle of the road um, in the last vlog. Straight ahead is the Bridge of Remembrance, but a lot of our favourite places to eat are along this Oxford Terrace, which also runs along the Avon River. So this is our, I actually have no idea. I think it sounds this way. Okay. Um, this will be our first stop, a place called Nero for breakfast. Quick shout out to Neville who just stopped us to say hello. He was off to give blood. Yeah, what good, a good man. Time. We like it when people actually stop and say hello. So we have actually been to Christchurch before, like obviously since the rebuild, and this is a place that we've been to. Craft Embassy up here. They've got an awesome craft beer selection. But other than kind of there and this little area, we really haven't seen much. So this whole kind of trip has been sort of a rediscovery, actually properly getting out and seeing what the city's all about with some insider tips. Uh, are you a member? I am, are you? <laughs> oh. Just kidding. Tuesday and it feels like everybody in here is in a business suit on a business meeting oh it's a Wednesday <laughs> oh my gosh how bad is that we just got a couple of flat whites and they come with a little cookie that's always a win I always love that so we went with the hazelnut butter and banana buttermilk waffles house-made Nutella parfait buttermilk waffles banana maple mascarpone roasted hazelnuts and caramelized milk what is caramelized milk it sounds like an absolute dream to me, whatever that is. Uh, I think we actually just got dessert for breakfast. What have we done? Nothing is going to taste the same after this. <laughs> this is a sweet start to the day, literally. delicious first start. Whoever it was that made that recommendation, well it was lots of people, 
thank you very much. Yeah, that was so good. I, Dane was like, how much did I eat? I was like, eat the whole thing. And I ate my full, what, half of it. You left some on your plate. I was like, we've, we've got places to be, food to eat. So we have I this- I just got excited. Yeah, it's hard, the first meal, isn't it? It's the same thing when we do food tours. So we've got this thing where we talk about a, a calf is our it's a calf and a cafe. Oh my gosh. I'm going to share You're this. Really sharing? Yeah. So we, we kind of sort of call the place a calf if it's a little bit, a little bit low key, a bit family friendly <laughs> maybe is the nice way to put it and not that great. And then we had cafe where it's kind of like cool, classy. Upmarket, um, good food, fresh yeah, produce. Yeah, hipsterish, something like that. And then modern. That is kind of whatever goes above that, I think. That was. That's a <laughs> that one needs a that one needs an accent. <laughs> So the Riverside Markets, this, this is a vibe. <laughs> I mean, so we've come upstairs, which is a great spot because I feel like we can smell everything. Yeah. Right next to us is um, a Spanish tapas bar and it says, come in and experience some of Spain. I feel like I can smell some of that sort of like that meat coming out. Smell Spain but I've got yeah. churros and there's a bar right there as well. And then just unlimited amount of food and beverage options down there. I was trying to find a way to explain it best. And then I saw a sign that said, a cooperative of artisan food and beverage makers showcasing the small businesses of Canterbury. It's quite cool because like there's things from loads of different places all around the world as well. I saw a Turkish place, mm. there's, um, yeah. there's Chinese, there's all sorts of different stuff, poke bowls, um, there's like a butchery, you can get fresh fish, you can get fresh produce. Yeah, I like the butchery, I like your Bobby's brunch, you know, that's not a chain. That is like literally yeah, Uncle Bobby from just out the road, you know what so I mean? So why are we here? For candy. Why are we here? Do you even know? No, I don't. Yeah, lollies. There's a sweet shop in here and also something called the Donut Dispensary, which I don't think we'll have room for both. So let's go scope it out. So in case you're wondering, Stace does a lot of the planning for the days that we're going to do. So I actually don't really know what I'm eating today. <laughs> but I've, as I've said in the past, I'm not a read the menu kind of guy. I'm a show up on the spot, surprise me kind of guy. So this this really works for me. Surprise, everything's sweet today. Well done. Although you didn't really plan it, everybody else did. Sure. <laughs> you did a lot of research, I'm sure. Something. Oh, that is sour. <laughs> <laughs> Your eye closed. Sour grape. So I think I prefer of, sour rainbow. We've got a lot of options here. So we got one, one strap for $4, which is quite a big thing. So we're thinking we're going to get two, two half straps, but the lady's being nice. She's letting us try a couple of samples. Yeah. That was a really hard decision. For me, it was a toss up between three. Moustache, milk and cookie bar, which do Whitaker's, um like chewy cookies, but we had a cookie yesterday. Mm. Do you like it? Mm. Mm. I love it. The donut dispensary, the salted caramel donut looked amazing. Damn, that looked good. And then we stumbled upon the candy shop. And we chose... Stumbled. You knew it was there. I we did. went for it. You beeline. You were like wandering like that with, with purpose. <laughs> So we got three different, they call them straps. This is the sour apple, sour cola, and sour rainbow. Oh, oh yeah. Cheers. Oh, cheers. How am I supposed to eat this? Mmm. <laughs> That's sour. Mmm. In a good way. It tastes like childhood. We were joking with it, she said. You want something that looks pretty in terms of color? Well, it tastes good, because kids like the color. I went for the kid one. I was one. like, I'm a kid at heart, but I'm going to need something that tastes good. And we did well. Is that nice? Okay. Oh, that's so sour. Oh.
So on to the next one. I think I think we've got space. We haven't really eaten anything substantial. Yeah. Yeah, we've just been like playing it safe. But our next stop is Little High Eatery, and it's kind of like an upmarket food court. And if you're from Auckland or you know of Ponsonby Central, it's kind of a little bit similar to that. Just as we stop at this lights here, this is a really good example of what you can kind of expect in Christchurch if you haven't been here. Places like that that are still haven't actually been touched or rebuilt. Opposite places that are completely rebuilt, next to lots that have been knocked down. Street art kind of on a lot of the walls. And then, I mean, you rotate around there again, you can just see the, the character. I don't quite know how else to explain it other than that. And we talk about contrast lots in cities and how we like that. It really does add something. Speaking of street art, that one's real cool. Cool illusion that it's made, eh? It is. The, well, it looks 3D, but it's not. Tropy. All right, this is it here. This is it. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Is that just the, the dumplings? Yeah, so the other the ramen's going to come out soon. So we've got six dumplings. Was it red wine? Beef. Beef. Looking good. So there are eight different options in there. I'm just reading the sign behind Dane. Noodle Monk, which is a Thai street food place. Base Wood Fired Pizza, that was a, a second choice for me. I really want to try that sometime. Bacon Bros Burgers, which I think is actually down by the Riverside Market as well. And then Eight Brains, which is where we got this from. And I can't read the other side of the sign. There was like Vietnamese in there. Um, a couple of like craft beer places as well. And like a Alpha Gone, which was a meat place. There's about 40 different craft beer options in there I think. And we've got none. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Water. Do I do it, do I do it in one go? Yeah we can cut. It's gonna be messy but you can see the pan fried on the bottom. You're gonna do it. It's all about that pan fried. Super crunchy on the bottom, soft on the top. Kind of a um a little bit of a spice or a real tomatoiness to that um, to that red sauce, um, red wine <laughs> juice sauce situation on there. Really tender meat though. Sometimes with beef can be quite chewy, but that's a really nice texture in there too. I'm sold. I've got some ramen coming as well. I forgot to mention that. Um, we've got a chicken ramen. We removed the, the, the corn. And you know what corn and ramen do? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of corn in there, so it's a cold day. Should be good. It's a big old ramen. Interesting that it's the flat noodles. It reminds me of like a, um, a pad to you. Like a Thai pad to you with a flat egg noodle. Um, damn, those mushrooms be big in there too. So I, I, yeah, off to the side though. I saw when they, one of the other ones was, was arrived at the same time and the corn was this enormous like yellow runway racing strip through the middle and I was like, not right, not right. Well, I'm no ramen expert and we generally like to keep things really positive, but that was a pretty general recommendation to just go in there, not where or what yeah, to eat. it's probably on us as to what we chose. The ramen was not very good at all. Bit bland. Really bland, kind of like herby almost, and just in a really weird way, just not much flavor going on, but... Dumplings were amazing, I really like them. <laughs> I, I went wild on the chili sauce though. I can't really feel my mouth right now. Can you not? <laughs> no. That's good. So there's some really good options in there, but that was just an unfortunate one I picked, obviously. Maybe it was the corn. Oh, oh you needed it the was corn the for corn. the flavor. Flav. <laughs> <laughs> Our final stop was the new kid on the block on top of a 1960s heritage listed building. Now the Muse Art Hotel is the Pink Lady Rooftop Bar. We were told there's no better place in the city for a drink during golden hour. While we do love a rooftop bar and getting a bit dressed up for something nice would be lying if we made things seem perfect all the time. Our afternoon reality was a little bit more like this. Less than an hour earlier, working from bed and struggling to find the motivation to get back up. But it was totally worth it and we can confirm the hype is real. There wasn't much hype about the food, but there should be. 
The bougie fries were epic, topped with Kewpie mayo, chives, and some magical seasoning. And then there was the crunchy bang bang chicken with saffron and lemon. Top that all off with a few well-deserved cocktails, or four, and we were happy. That wraps up a day of eating and drinking and explore it. There's so much more food and drink and stuff that we could have had, eh? But oh, we were, absolutely. We were pretty tame about what we actually consumed today, I reckon. I wish we had a food week, not that, a food day. That yeah, would be good. Or, we, yeah, if we spanned it over a whole week, we could just show a huge amount of food. But I reckon we found some of the best, like, pockets, neighborhoods, areas. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> I have loved today. It's been, like Dane was saying, those pockets and those little laneways and markets have been awesome. And this place was amazing. So thank you so much to everyone who recommended yeah, Pink Lady Rooftop. And just all of the other places and in general. The other places. Yeah, they were amazing. <laughs>